questions. Let's see if I get this hat to fit my head. I'm not as big of a fan of this hat as I am my other hat, but my other hat's in the car. For some reason, this hat always looks crooked. I don't think it is, but when I go on on uh, YouTube, it does. So we'll give everyone a, a, a second here to get in um, before we start answering questions and talking baseball and all that stuff. Hopefully everyone is having a good night. It's like 9.15, my time, Eastern time. Hi, Giants fan. What's going on? Here comes everybody. Hey, Josh C. What's going on? How's it going, Steven? Hello, Xander. Hey, Dan's Dailies. What's going on, Derek Abram? Cameron, hello. Hello, everyone. Hey, Adrian, Luke, what's going on? Gunner, what's up? Hello, Anthony. Hello, Jack. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. While we wait for everyone to get in here, um, save your questions for a minute. I'm gonna let everyone start to kind of get in. Um, could everyone do me a favor and like the video? We're, try we're gonna try to break the record for likes tonight, if you could. Thanks, Steven, you too. Yeah, what's our record for likes? I think we've gotten like five or 600 likes, I think, before in a live video. But we're gonna try to break that tonight. So if you could like the video, we got 41 likes right now, or um, yeah, I think the record was like five or 600. Go Padres, yeah, what's going on? Michael Kopech, uh, I don't know, I haven't, um, I mean, I'm sure he will, but I, I have not been following how he's doing. My favorite ballpark that I've ever played at probably be Dodger Stadium just because of the atmosphere there. <laughs> You're on the clock. Be careful. Uh, you don't need to play college ball to play pro ball. No. Lots of players get drafted out of high school. Um, uh, Gio, I was not at practice tonight because I had to go to um, Boston. I had to go to the doctor's because I had a surgery last um, in the summer and it isn't really healing properly. So I had to go back and get it checked today. So and now I have to go back in six more weeks to see if I get better from now till then. So not fun, Gio, not fun. Will I ever eat beans on the stream? Probably won't. No. <laughs> You even know what that means, Sam. <laughs> Are you calling me soft? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I think the Yankees will win. Oh, well, I'll go Yankees over Blue Jays. Although Blue Jays are coming. They're, they're, uh, they're getting close. I started lifting weights my uh, junior year of high school is when I started to first lift. Is the low T drill good? Yeah, I think I think a low T drill will help you usually stay like in good posture and over the plate. But I wouldn't just work on the low T like I wouldn't just work on the high T. I think it's important to move the T around up and down, in and out. Class of 2023 recruiting question. Uh, when we're done talking here, I would I suggest you go look at our recruiting playlist. I have tons of videos that explain like every step of the way. So you'll get like hours and hours of me talking on there, which will help you a lot more than me answering that question in like 30 seconds. This could definitely be the Padres year. This year, I think next year will really be the Padres year, but this year could be it as well. Well, we got 100 people in here. Could everyone do me a favor and like the video? We're going to try to get 600 likes today. How do you get drafted? Well, um, typically, scouts are gonna come and watch your games, whether you're in high school or college, 
and you just have to, you know, have a skill set that they think will translate to their level and help them win games, and then you could get drafted. Yeah, so I got, um, I got, that's a good question about should you play pro ball if you get drafted out of high school? I was drafted out of high school and I decided to go play college. So I turned down um, signing with the Dodgers. And it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't an easy decision. They offered me $165,000 to sign at a high school. And, you know, as a high school kid with $2.52, in my bank account. Um, I actually had a couple of bonds that my grandmother gave me growing up. So I had a little bit more than that, but, um, it's not an easy decision, especially when you want to play pro ball, but I thought going to college would be best for me to be able to develop and get better and, and then get drafted three years later. And that's what happened. What do I think about Bloom in Boston? Um, I think he will do really well. I think he, I think this is like a long-term thing. I think he kind of knew that he wasn't going to come in and be great right away. So I think in a few years, Red Sox will be, be solid. My living situation in the minor leagues just depended what level I played at. My first year we lived in a hotel in Eugene, Oregon, and then, um, Fort Wayne wizard. We all packed it to Fort Wayne, Indiana. We packed into a little apartment, like four or five of us. Uh, in, in Lake Elsinore, I had a host family. In San Antonio and Double A, I had a room with Chad Huffman in a, a nice apartment. Triple A, I had a room with Wade LeBlanc in uh, a nice apartment. So that's, and then, you know, I played a bunch of other years. Most of it was apartments once you get a little older. Billy Wagner in the hall. I mean, I think Billy Wagner, I think if you look at his stats during his heyday, I think he's one of the, he might have some of the best closer stats ever, I think, if you look at his stats. I haven't looked at him in a while, but hey, Sam Seeger. Thank you so much for the super chat, Sam. What do you think the Cardinals need to do to get back to the playoffs this season? I feel like they aren't aggressive enough. Love the channel. Big fan. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like the, the Cardinals are not aggressive enough. I mean, they haven't gone out off the top of my head and made any like huge, huge signings. But I think they're like obviously a really good organization that always has a chance and they seem to develop their players pretty well and they, they just seem to be a smart organization. Now, I'm not a, a huge follower of the Cardinals, so I'm not going to act like I know everything that they're doing because I don't, I mean, I don't like the Cardinals. I don't not like the Cardinals. I just don't follow them. So um, shout out to Bronson. But I think... Um, uh, I'm interested to see what happens with Yachty. Has anyone heard anything late, lately? I haven't heard, but, you know, I don't think, I, I, I wouldn't think that they're, they're always good. You know, I don't want to say like, oh, they're not going to be World Series contenders. I don't know. There's been plenty of years where I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they have enough and they, they seem to do really well. So most important focus for an 11 year old player. I think number one, have fun. Uh, and number two, as an 11 year old, just kind of start to learn, like, and build a foundation. Um, understanding the game, how the game's played. And, you know, you're so young. Um, you know, we, we try to build a foundation as far as like how to properly, how we want them to swing the bat, how we want them to run the bases, how we want them to throw the ball, how we want them to field the ball. Uh, not that we don't work on that with older players, but I think it's important to be able to build that as a young as a young player. Give yourself a good foundation as you move up. Evan, thank you so much for the super chat. What do you do when you've seen teammates during your career or your AB athletes today not putting hundred percent hundred percent effort in practice or games? Uh, well, I usually um, well, I usually have to bring it up to them. Last night, I <laughs> speaking of eleven year olds. Last night, I had to talk to our eleven year old team about the way they approach practice. And I didn't think that they had a very good practice. It was the first practice of the year that I thought wasn't very good. Um, so I let them know afterwards and said, that's not how we practice. And uh, so I suggest you start practicing with a little more focus, a little more energy, or um, 
I won't be very happy. <laughs> and I think they'll practice better next time. EJ, thank you so much for the super chat. Would you have loved to play at the Polo Grounds? Well, I mean, I think it would have been really cool. Although I would have probably, I always seemed when I played at stadium, this is weird. This might just be every player feels this way. Um, I always felt like when I played at a stadium, like let's say you play at a stadium that has like, it's the smallest stadium ever, right? It's like this short, it's 270 down the line, it's 300 the center. I know there's no stadium like that really as an older player, but I, if I'm playing there, I'm probably hitting eight ground balls that series. And then the next series you play at a, park like doesn't have a fence it's like it, there's just no fence and that's the series where you hit like seven 400 foot fly balls and they get caught that's what it feels like being a baseball player so i probably would have done that at the polo grounds hit about eight balls to center field that were caught all right did i ever meet tony Gwynn? what was he like i did meet tony Gwynn a couple times i've talked to him on a few different occasions i talked to him uh when i got drafted uh, they flew me out to San Diego. I got to go on TV and Tony was there and got to talk with him a little bit. And then when I was with the Padres, obviously, um, you know, he was around a lot and I got to talk a little bit about my, uh, about my swing. And that kind of makes me mad right there that I have the, I have the Celtics game recording and my Apple TV little notification popped up that said, the game is close in the fourth quarter. Well, I don't want to know that Apple. That's why I'm recording the game. So you don't, so I can watch it later. All right. All right, everybody. Could everyone give this video a like again? I'm just going to keep reminding everyone like every five minutes. We're going for 600 likes tonight. We're going to break the all-time record. I think it was like 600. We got, we got to get the 600 likes. If I forget every five minutes to remind everyone, somebody put it in the comments. Lindor to the Mets. Well, I think it's a great deal for the Mets. I think it's hard to get a superstar player and they got a superstar player and, you know, they had to give up what two... Uh, two guys that have just got drafted essentially and then Rosario who's you know been a been in the big leagues but hasn't been like he's been just okay I guess um, and then another they give away another young shortstop who came up this past year and did well in his limited time but you know he could be a decent player so I'll take the superstar especially Lindor I think the Mets are a good team, yeah. Uh, a lot of Mets questions. Thanks, Kevin. What do I think of the Axe Bat? Better bat speed with it? I don't think that I get better bat speed with the Axe Bat, but um, I do think there's something for not having the knob on, on your, like I had, a, I broke my hamate bone, so I think the Axe Bat could help with that. Yeah, I think the Astros will still get booed, yes. Fans really didn't get a good chance to boo them this year because they, they weren't really allowed to be at most stadiums. So, um, How do you get your velocity up? Well, it could be a bunch of things. It could be a, a, you know, a strength issue. It could be a flexibility issue. It could be a mechanics issue. Really, that's the way everything is, hitting, running, throwing everything could be a mechanics issue the way you move your body it could be a strength issue you know you could just not be very explosive and if you increase your explosiveness you should throw harder and hit faster and and all that did i play in canada not as a uh, major league player as a minor league player i did and then um growing up i played there every now and then oh we got a super chat everyone hold on one sec Super chat, we have Aaron Davis. Thank you, Aaron. Did any of the pitchers on your teams get in a sticky situation or use anything you know? Uh, yeah, so I made a video on this um, last week, I think, when it came out about Garrett Cole and some other guys using illegal substances. Um, I've seen tons and tons and tons of pitchers using stuff uh, usually what I always saw was a combination of sunscreen and rosin. Um, so you'd see guys a lot in the clubhouse putting a ton of sunscreen on their arm, like a lot of sunscreen. And then they'll take rosin and they'll, you know, they'll start putting the rosin on their arm and then they'll, you know, massage it in. And it becomes like this kind of like tacky, um, 
substance. And so, you know, you'll see it a lot. You'll see it a lot. Pitchers go into their arms and doing this stuff. And, um, just rip it and say hi. Okay. That sounds good. So, um, yeah, so I've seen that a lot. Is Mookie Betts the best player in the MLB? Well, I think he's one of the best players. I mean, I still like Mike Trout. I think Juan Soto is absolute freak show. I think Acuna is a freak show. I think Tatis is also. There's a lot of great players. I did see Vlad lost 50 pounds. Yeah, good for him. Hopefully he's able to keep it off once, you know, the season starts. You put snot on the ball. <laughs> All right, everyone, can everyone give uh, the video a like? We're gonna get up to 200 on this round. Oh, these questions are going fast, guys. This is tough, that wasn't five minutes, it was close enough. Where does the call come from to hit a batter? I would say most times players, pitchers take that upon themselves. Um, I'm sure there's been instances where a manager or a coach has suggested that. I don't know if I've ever seen a coach or manager say, go hit this guy. Um, I think usually the pitcher takes it upon themselves. <laughs> Thank you for everyone that has liked the video. I appreciate that. We're up to 200 almost already. Wow, these questions are so fast, I can't read them. How do I slow this down? Can I slow these down? We've got a super chat, Rich Durbano. Haven't seen you in a while, Rich. Hey, Matt, hope you're still holding your apple. I still got every share, Rich. I hope you do too. People seeing the love, love, love the new iPhone. It looks like a pop in the 140s is coming next week after their holiday earnings got announced. I agree. How about Apple talking about a little, uh, what am I reading? Apple and Hyundai, Hyundai, however you say it. Maybe a little uh, electric car in the future. I don't know, it could be interesting. Thank you for the super chat though, Rich, I appreciate it. Uh, I am into stocks, yes, I do enjoy talking about stocks. How do major leaguers feel about fans who run on the field? Um, I think most of them laugh. Doesn't happen all the time, so. I've told my one story of a fan running on the field when I was in AAA in Portland. You're gonna get drafted this year, good luck. I was, on the triple, I was on in AAA in Portland and the lights went out in the middle of a pitch, got pitch black. And you could barely see anything. Like I could barely see the guy next to me. I could barely see the shortstop, I was second base. And then all of a sudden, like I see this like shadow running towards me and then all of a sudden it's like this random guy. And I was like, whoa, I'm like, what's up man? He's like, hey, what's going on? I'm like, nothing. Where'd you come from? And he's like, oh, I jumped out of the stands right there and just hopped on the field. I was like, oh, oh, good, good thinking. And then all of a sudden, like the emergency lights went on and got a little lighter and he looked around and I was like, hey, I was like, you might want to get out of here. Are they going to be able to see you? He's like, all right. And he took off and ran and just jumped back into the stands. Never seen that happen before. But if Ozuna did, if Ozuna did not leave early, would the Braves be World Series champs? Um, I mean, the Braves are a great team. I don't know if they would have been World Series champs, but I like the Braves. I like them this year too. Mark Spell, thank you so much for the super chat, Mark. What do you think about Michael Brantley resigning? So I like Michael Brantley a lot. I think he is a professional hitter. Um, two of my favorite professional hitters are um, DJ LeMahieu and Michael Brantley. I think they're both not that, they're not my favorite hitters, but I, I love the way they hit. I like their approach. I like how they never get sped up and they're you know not afraid to use the whole field and they're not afraid to hit with two strikes and they put the bat on the ball. And, uh, so I really like, I really like Brantley. Uh, how old is he now? He's getting a little bit older. I actually played with Michael Brantley when I was with the Indians a little bit in spring training. And I wish I was around him more because he was younger then. This was 2013. 
And a lot of people were talking about, him. he was kind of banged up a little bit that spring training, so he wasn't playing a ton. I didn't get to see him a lot, but everyone was always like, oh, this Brantley guy, this Brantley kid is gonna be awesome. He's the next big thing for the Indians. And uh, I remember watching him be like, hey, he looks like a good player, but it's hard to tell when you don't watch him every day because all the players are good. I've told this story before, and I was with the Indians. I spent the whole spring training fielding and hitting like most days with Francisco Lindor, um, Ramirez, Jesus Aguilar, um, Gio Urshela, um, like who else? Roberto Perez. There were so many good young players that we, I was with every single day. And it's weird when you're playing with them, you're just like, oh, everybody's really good here. If you had told me back then, like, oh, Lindor is going to be the next great shortstop and big league player, I probably wouldn't even have guessed that. Uh, then again, I guess at the time he was super young. And so I probably should have been like, yeah, this guy's one of the better players here. Oh, he's really, really good. And he's 20 years old or whatever he was. I don't know. How old is he now? What would he have been? In, what was Francisco Lindor in 2013? How old would he have been? Who do you think the best catcher of right now is, of time is, of all time? Uh, the best catcher? I don't know. I'd have to look up the stats and everything. My fa Personally, my favorite catcher to watch was uh, Pudge Rodriguez, Ivan Rodriguez. Wow, Lindor was 19, so that makes sense. So he was really good and he was only 19. I, I guess I wasn't, I didn't realize he was only 19 at that time. Um, yeah, Lindor was, uh, but it was crazy. Like our infield and I was most, I was doing a lot of shortstop then for some reason, I don't know why I put me at shortstop, but it was like, we had Urshela at third. Um, Ramirez was at third a little bit too. And then Lindor was at short. I was at short mostly. Second base was Tony Walters, who's now a, a catcher for the Rockies, I think still. He was at second. Jesus Aguilar was at first. Um, I forget who the outfield was. Naquin. Perez was behind the plate. Like Naquin uh, was in center. Oh, we got a super chat, everybody. Hold on a second, everyone. We got a super chat. Whoa, Joseph. Thank you for the super chat. That might be that might be one of the biggest super chats we've ever had. Unbelievable. Thanks for all the great content and help. Go buy a share of Penstock on me. All right. I will do that, Joseph. Thank you very much. That's very generous of you. Should MLB use more small ball in situations? Um, here's the thing. This is where it gets tough. You know, I think the numbers show basically what teams have determined. People a lot smarter than me have determined that you score more runs if you don't bunt, basically. and You don't play small ball. You don't give away outs. And so are there situations where a small ball might help you score one run in a close game? Yes, there are times that that can happen. But the issue is, if you are creating a team, and this is just my opinion, if you are creating a team that isn't going to use small ball very much, you're not going to, one, you're not going to have players that can execute on that, and two, you're not going to practice it very much because you feel other, th other things are more valuable to practice. And so then when you get into a situation where you're in the World Series or the playoffs and somebody says, hey, this is a good time to use a small ball tactic. Well, your team hasn't done it. You're not built for it. You haven't practiced it. It's not as easy. You know, it's not just like a video game where you can just be like, okay, let's bunt here. And oh, yep, we'll get it down. You got to work on that stuff and you have to have players that can do it. And so that's why I think it, it's hard to just say, oh, this would be a good time to do it. Um, oh, well, everyone give this video a like. Everyone give this video a like if you can. We're get, we got to go up to 300 now. We're going to wake up, make our way all the way up to 600 today. Why does your arm hurt when you do pull downs? That is a good question. I guess it depends on where it hurts and why it hurts. Um, but I wouldn't think it should hurt when you do it. Yeah, every, yeah that's right, Rex. I like it, telling everyone to like the vid, not a baby. Oh, we got another super chat that came in here fast, everyone. 
Uh, but I'm going to do this question first. When did you know you were a D1 prospect? I probably knew I was a Division One prospect uh, my sophomore year of high school. Um, I started getting stuff from colleges at that time, and then I went out and visited. First visit I ever made was University of Virginia. They had told me that they were interested in, in me, and so I went and watched them play. I wasn't sure I could play at that level, but I started to think, like, I like – there's a division one school, pretty one, a pretty good school that's interested in me. And then I really knew my junior year because when I was a junior in high school, that's when I started getting lots of offers and, and lots of calls. All right, we got a super chat, everyone. Hold on one sec. Whoa, we got two. Whoa, we got three super chats. Drew Mello, I'm hitting seven home runs this season. What do you think? I think you're hitting 20 home runs. Drew, is this the real Drew Mello? Because last time Drew Mello gave me $2 on here and I asked you, Drew, you said it wasn't you. So this is either Drew, the real Drew, it's imposter Drew, or maybe it's Drew's dad. I don't know. But I'm going to have to ask you again at practice if this is you, Drew. But you're going to hit 20 home runs this year. Zach, that, Zach, thank you so much for the super chat. And thank you, Drew. I don't know if I said thank you, Drew, but thank you, Drew. So, Zach, so I'm working towards getting signed as a free agent. What age would you say that organization kind of hold off on signing a guy because of age? This is a great question. So, um, I started to realize, so let's say this. I was done playing by 28 years old. Now, I had some injuries. I had a lot of injuries. And I hadn't played great. But you have to keep in mind that I was also a former, at that point, first-round pick. And so, at one point, I was considered good. And by about 28, I felt like people started to think I was old. And so, I don't know if that helps you at all, but I get so many questions. I get tons of emails all the time from people that are like, hey, I'm 33, I'm 37, I'm 35, I'm 41. I'm, do you think I can make it to the major leagues? I you know, didn't play college ball, but I played high school ball and like I want to play and all this stuff. Like, There's so many of those questions. It is incredibly, incredibly hard at any age age yet to play professional baseball but if you are a older player like if you're in your 30s if in the in your 30s in the to play pro ball is considered like old as dirt you know sometimes people see like a 33 year old in the big leagues or even a 35 year old and so then they think like oh if you're 33 you're not that old if you're a, the only guys that are like 33 and 35 in the big leagues are are like guys that ha, have been playing for a long time you usually don't just see like a random guy at 33 and it's like, oh, he's making his debut. Maybe once in like a blue, blue moon. But um, so like if you're in the minors and you're 30, you're old as hell. Like I was considered old. When I was 27 in the minor leagues, people looked at me and talked to me like I was a grandpa. I felt like the old veteran guy. I was only 27 years old. But I started playing at 21. If you get drafted out of high school, you're playing at 18. And there's some Dominican kids that were like that are like, I mean, they might be 25, but they say they're 17. I think even some say 16. So in the minors, it's a much younger game. Hopefully that helps your, your uh, helps you out, Zach. I don't mean to be, um, that might, um, I don't know, is pessimistic the word I'm looking for? I'm not sure. Max Kelly, thank you so much for the Super Chat, Max, but there's no question here. I don't know if I missed you. Uh, well, they didn't put a question here. I don't know if you uh, had a question or you're just sending a super chat. Um, but if you put um, if you put a question in the regular chat, hopefully I can see it. If I don't see it and someone sees Max's question, uh, let me know. EJ, thank you again for your super chat. My favorite White Sox picture of all time is Mark Burley. Are you a fan? Oh, I love Mark Burley. Uh, the things I liked about Mark Burley, the guy would get the ball, get on the mound, throw. Throw. Like the games went by fast. And you remember that sick play that Mark Burley made on that um, that PFP? That was sick. So I remember that. I like Mark Burley a lot. Nice little change up, fading away from right-handed hitters. Yeah, I like Mark. I don't think I ever got to face Mark Burley, but hey, SBN, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, your coach said to feel the ground ball with one hand in the infield, even if it's easy. I would say that that's incorrect, but I'm not going to tell your coach he's incorrect. 
What I say is this, if the ball is within the framework of your body, so within your shoulders, it should be typically a two-handed play. If it's outside the framework of your body, it should be a one-handed play. That's the easy way to think about it. There are exceptions to that rule, but that is a general rule. So thanks, Rex, I'm trying. So if you want to bring that up to your coach, he might slap you. I don't know, he might get mad at you for, for arguing with him. You can tell him I said that and... Uh, can public high school players get noticed by colleges? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Public or private, it means nothing. Uh, but in my honest opinion, you usually don't get recruited out of high school very much because colleges are playing during the high school season. So they don't, are, they're not able to recruit a lot. So usually the summer ball is for recruiting. Hey, Lara's here. Lara said, everybody like this video. She wants 300 likes. She said she'll show her face if you do 300 likes. She didn't say that. She actually just gave me a, a, a mad face and, and went like this. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I just watched you. Uh, super chat. John O. John Olerud? John O. Thank you, John. Any strategies on getting a decent 15-year-old to increase their intensity? Not go crazy, but just turn up and on. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, it's a tough one because I see kids... It's hard to it's hard to get kids to change like you know some kids are out of control and you try to get them to calm down a little bit and it's tough because they're wired that way and then some kids are like you said just kind of um well what's the word that you use let's see what the word is that you used again you said um oh you just said they just got to turn it up a notch um you know usually for me. I would start by just talking to the player and saying like, I feel like, you know, if you became more intense, it's hard to say without knowing the player, but, you know, pick up the intensity a little bit. I think it'll help your performance on the field and talk to them. It, it, maybe they say, maybe that's just like, oh, I didn't realize I wasn't that intense, but you know, okay, I'll try it. And maybe they won't do anything and they'll just keep doing it um, the way they do it. That's happened to me plenty of times. I've told, I've talked to players and they don't listen to anything I say. Some players do, some players don't. Um, and then if I need to get that player to, to pick up the intensity, and he doesn't want to listen to me. Well, then I'm just going to be on him all the time. And I'm, I'm going to raise like my intensity level and my energy, um, to try to get them to, to do it. You know, sometimes the team will take on the personality of the coach. And so if you're a coach, just kind of always, sitting there not doing anything, not saying anything, not showing any energy, not having, you know, then the players do that. But if you reverse it, I'm not saying you're doing this, I'm just saying, um, but if you reverse it and you're high energy all the time, it'll rub off on them. And so uh, then again, you did you say sun? You might've said sun, let me see. Oh, you just said a 15 year old. Yeah, so it's tough. If you're, if you're dad, if you're the dad, it might be tough because some of the kids will say, well, you don't know what you're talking about, Dad. But if you're a coach, I'd just be on the guy all the time and uh, and hope that that helps him pick up his personality, his personality, his intensity. All right. More Super Chats. Let's get to them real quick. But everyone, like this video. we got to get to 300 now. Okay. Zach, thank you again for the Super Chat. How should I market myself then? My numbers are nowhere close to my goal, but as I get closer, should I start reaching out to former big leaguers? I'm 19. Oh, you're only 19 years old. Um, the biggest way to do it now is literally through video. Um, I don't even know if you're a pitcher. Did you say you're a pitcher or not? Pitching is easier because you can just set a video up with a radar gun, a catcher, and you can throw and people can see you. And, um, you know, there's different things now, whether it's Twitter, Twitter is really big, uh, YouTube a little bit, but you can just start posting yourself. Um, and then you can start contacting teams. Teams will have open trials, although with COVID and all this stuff, I'm not sure, you know, then maybe at 19, I don't know if you look into getting into a college or maybe you look into trying to play independent ball or something. There's a lot of different options, but I would start by, well, first you got to start by making sure your skill level is there because it's really hard to play at that level. You know, if you go on Twitter, there's a lot of guys that you'll see posting videos of them throwing 96 miles an hour and no one has signed them. And people will be like, how is this guy not signed? It's just, there's a lot of guys in the world that throw really, really hard. It's really hard to play pro ball. So again, I'm not trying to discourage you, but hopefully that helps you out. 
Drew Mello, who wins a home run derby? Me or Carter Gibbs? Me 100%. Wow, Drew. Talking some smack tonight on here, huh? Um, I don't know, Gibbsy's got a good swing, but Drew, you might have Gibbsy in the weight department a little bit. I think you might be maybe a little bit bigger than him, so that's cheating. I'm gonna say it's a tie. Depends what's, what, what field we're on here. We got a righty versus a lefty, so. Maybe it's a short porch to right. I don't know though, Drew, the way you were swinging last practice, you weren't pulling the ball very much. Everything you were hitting was going to right field, with trying to get you to be able to get your barrel out there, look at it and turn the barrel up in the ball and pull a ball in the air. Hey, Max Kelly, thank you so much for the super chat. My son is three and a half years old, throws right-handed and naturally is stepping with his right foot. Yeah, most kids do that. What would be a fun drill to help him feel the correct motion. I don't want to overcoach him. So, so my daughter does the same thing. She steps with her right foot. I think most kids will step with the same foot as their arm. Um, this is how I taught my son. I, I have videos of this. I should put it up on, Inst on YouTube. Um, so when he was like, could barely walk, he just started walking. I would, uh, I would stand them up. Cause the first thing kids do, at least young kids, in my experience, both my kids did this the very first time they throw, is if they're throwing this way, they're gonna stand and they're gonna look right at you like this, right? So they're, they're not gonna turn sideways, they're gonna stand like this. But if you're gonna throw in a game, if I'm gonna throw it that way, I'm gonna stand like this, so I'm sideways. But kids will stand like this, then they'll step with the same foot as they're throwing on. So the first thing I did, um, I, I just taught my son in three ways. This is not very scientific. I t I, every time I picked up the ball, I said, stand sideways. So I showed him what sideways was, so then he would stand sideways. So he'd throw this way, and he, well, he's a lefty. He'd stand like this, throwing this way, and he, he'd go stand sideways. Well, before he could talk, I guess I'd say it, and then he would start to say, stand sideways. I'd say, lift your leg, and so he'd lift his, I'd make him lift his right leg up, try to balance, he's a lefty, remember. Lift his right leg up, so he'd balance, and then I'd say throw, and he'd throw. So we, we just did that bunch. I'll, I'll put the video up one day. So every time, stand sideways, lift your leg, throw. He did that over and over again, and that was it. Then he never stepped with the wrong foot anymore. He always picked up the right foot, but he would, for a long time, he would, when he started to talk, he would do, say that. He'd say, stand sideways, lift your leg, throw. Hopefully that helps. One more super chat, M. Collins, 1881. Henry Rowan Gardner or Mariano <laughs> as your closer. Rosenbaga, Garden Hoser. Um, uh, you know, Rowan Gardner is a little more injury prone. So I'm probably gonna go Mar Mariano. Although at his peak, Rowan Gardner was unhittable. Um, but I'll go Mariano. Great question though. All right, we're back, everybody. Hey, 300 likes, everybody. 300 likes. Let's get some more likes. Can you guys get some more likes? Let's get some. We're going to 600 tonight, so we need more likes. Can everybody give the video a like? That would be great. Is Bauer maybe going to the Dodgers? Is that true? Yeah, Padres. I like the Padres this year. How hard is it to pick up spin on the ball? Um, not very hard. So it becomes, when you see it over and over again, you see like, you know, you'll see a curveball going like this. It's not that you see like the, the laces, it's not in slow motion, but you just see, you know, the breaking ball do this with top spin. You see the four seam fastball here. You see a two seam kind of tilted over a little bit. Um, you know, you'll see a splitter kind of tumble. So you see that stuff, I think, pretty easily as a hitter because um, that's all we do as hitters is look at the ball coming at you all day long. So uh, one of my, probably my best ability as a player, uh, I couldn't do a lot of things, but one of the things that I could do well is see the ball, read the ball, know if it's going to be a ball or strike or ball or strike. So plate discipline you know, understand the strike zone and reading the ball, I always thought I was really good at. I don't know if that's because I have very good eyes, so I have really good vision. Um, I forget what it is, 20, uh, 2012 vision, I think is what I have. What's the best you can have, 2010, I think. I don't believe I have 2010, but I think I have 2012. I 
All right, we got a bunch of super chats, everyone. Let me get to these real quick. Wow, I missed a bunch of them. Max Kelly. Oh, wow, Max, thanks so much. Thank you, Simple. Thanks, Max, I appreciate that. I appreciate you watching tonight. Kevin Moore, I see a lot of D1 questions. Can you remind people that there are some very good MLB players to come that started at the JUCO NAIA D2 level? Yeah, um, definitely. I definitely think that, uh, I get that question a lot. Can I play professional baseball if I don't play D1? The answer is yes. Um, you know, there's probably more D1 players in other levels, but you definitely can. And we remind kids of that all the time. Like we have tons of kids in our program. We've had, you know, probably a hundred kids go on to play college baseball. And every, almost everybody says, I want to go play D1. Now they don't all go play D1. Most of them play D2 or D3. Excuse me. Um, and we've had some Duco players. But um, everyone kind of shoots for D1 because, well, those are the schools that you see on TV all the time. You know, you see the Vanderbilts and you see the Florida States and the UNCs. And, you know, when you're watching, you know, college football, you see the Alabamas and the Clemsons and, and um, you know, basketball. You see Duke and, and all these schools. So kids naturally, you know, that's where they want to go. They see these big time schools. They want to go there. So, but yeah, we always, re we remind kids, we always tell kids, you know, it's not the, the number after the D that's important. It's about finding the right fit. And it's not about, you know, the bumper sticker or the sweatshirt and being able to say, yeah, I go to this school just because it's a big name school, but where are you going to play? Where are you going to develop? We're going to have fun. We're going to enjoy school. We're going to get a good education, all that stuff. But I agree with you. Uh, let's see. RC from the NYC. What's up, Matt? Hey, Lara. What's up, Chad? Hope everyone is well. Who are your picks to enter the Hall of Fame this year? Oh, that is a good question, RC. I need to pull up. I need my, uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I looked at it literally like a while ago. Um, and so I don't know and I can't look it up because uh, I'm using my phone right now. So RC, let me look it up right after I get off of this. But Who's on the uh, who's on the ballot again this year? For some guys that are close, we've got uh, what do we got? We got Kurt Schilling up there, I think. We've got uh, who else? Someone put in the chat real quick. Who are some of the top guys? Oh, Clemens. Yeah, I know Clemens was juicing it up, but man, he was nasty, nasty. Um, we got Barry Bonds again, like. You know, this is such a, you're getting all these guys now with Manny Ramirez and all these guys that are like, you know, you get all these steroid guys and it brings up, a, oh, alleged steroid guys. Um, and so it's weird, you know, you got like Kurt Schilling who, talent wise, I think he's a Hall of Famer, but then you've got, you know, the media and all those questions. Um, yeah, Pudges, and you're right. I mean, I think Barry Bonds, put him in. Manny Ramirez, put him in. Roger, put him in. Like, some people say, no, don't do that. But golly, they're so good. Todd Helton. Yeah, Todd Helton's an interesting one. I have to look at his numbers a little bit more. No Bonds. See, I don't know. Like, Barry Bonds for me was, I think in the history of baseball, I don't know if I'd want to pitch to anyone less than Barry Bonds. Like, he was unbelievable. And I know he was juiced out of his mind. He was humongous, but it was, it was like a video game. All right, John O, thank you so much for your super chat. When are you going to hit dingers with the baseball bros? Or the, uh, um, what are the baseball bat bros? Is that what they're called? Um, I don't know. They shot me a message. So somebody write to them, tell them to reach out to me. I have to get my cell phone to them somehow. Um, I'll reach out to them on like Instagram or something. I don't know if they have an Instagram, but I'd like to do that. That'd be fun. Where are they located? They're out on the West Coast, aren't they? Are they in the Pacific Northwest? Is that where they are? Hey, thanks, Christian. Uh, you saw my son hang off the tee. He's awesome. At what age do you think you can tell that a young kid may be special? Uh, I'm not really sure. Like, because this is my... Well, this is my first time seeing a player that young. Like, I don't see a lot of young players. Obviously, I've been watching him since he could swing a bat. Um, it'll be interesting to see how good he ends up being because I think most people think their kids are awesome. <laughs> so 
Uh, I try not to get carried away with that. A lot of people see him swing and be like, oh my God, this guy, he's unbelievable. I don't know if he is or not. I mean, I don't watch other six-year-olds swing and I didn't, you know, when he was three and he was hitting pretty good, like I didn't watch any other three-year-olds. So I don't, I have no idea, but um, I guess we'll find out over the next few years. <laughs> Managing the number two Padre bust of all time. <laughs> we try to say Jack. I'm trying to say that I'm number one bust of all time. I don't think that's true. I think he's built a lot more. He's way more confident than I ever was at that age. So if anyone's going to the big leagues for like 15 years, it'll it's him. All right. Juan Gonzalez. Juan, I enjoyed watching you play all those years. Juan gone. Uh, with so many bats out there, how do you decide what bat to go with from your high school days to pro? What was your favorite bats of all time? Love your bits. Yeah, it's really difficult. There's more bats now than there was, was, than there was back then. Um, you, know I mean? you know how I chose what bat I wanted to use as a professional player? I got, to, uh, I got drafted and I showed up. I didn't have any wood bats and they said, we have, you get two wood bats. And I said, okay. And I grabbed the one with the biggest barrel because I didn't know a whole lot about wood bats. I used a little bit of wood bats in high school and a little bit in Cape Cod League, but I always just, I never bought bats. It's just whatever they gave me. So I swung an I-13, a Louisville Slugger I-13. Couldn't hit with it. Went to a Louisville Slugger 243, which is a huge barrel also. I mean, I say I couldn't hit with it. I hit around 300, but I couldn't hit for any power. And then... Um, and then somebody mentioned to me like, oh, you know, it's, it's a heavy bat, it's a big barrel, maybe go to a smaller barrel. So in instructional league, I went to a C-271, which was a, a smaller barrel and it felt lighter. And I hit a home run the first day using that thing in a, in a instructional league game against the Angels, I think it was. I, I just, high fastball, boom, I smashed the thing. Line shot out of the park. First home run I hit as a professional. I didn't hit any in short season. And I was like, holy crap, I'm like, Maybe I was using the wrong bat the whole time. And then I just started hitting tons of homers with like the C-271. So I stuck with that for a long time. Hey, Vincent. Thanks for watching my channel. Our channel, because it's not just me on here. We got other people on here too, but I appreciate it. And good luck if you play. Good luck if you don't play. Why do batters go through batting slumps? Well, I think batters go through batting slumps for one, because the game is so hard. And so it's just hard to be consistent. Like almost no one can be just completely consistent. You're gonna have ups and downs. Um, that's just the way the game is. It's hard and sometimes you get unlucky. You know, sometimes you hit a couple line drives right at somebody and and then you get a couple strike three calls on you, and then you know you get a couple of normal outs, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh man, I haven't had a hit in seven at bats. You start to press a little bit, and it's hard to get those bad th bad um, thoughts out of your head, and it starts to steamroll or snowball. I mean, and you get difficult. But really good players are players typically, you know, that can have. They, it's like this with every sport, right? They say great quarterbacks have short memories, great closers have short memories. Like you've got to be able to have a short memory and focus on the positive stuff, which is tough. So, um, but that, I think that's the main reason. Uh, Lake Elsinore Storm. I love being. I love being at Lake Elsinore. Why are MLB pitchers so laid back? Uh, I wouldn't say that they're laid back. Uh, some are, but some aren't. I played with, you know, I played with Jake Peavy, who literally every single pitch he threw was like grunting and like spitting and shooting snot out of his nose. And every pitch, it was like, it was like he was in a, he was like a football player playing baseball or a boxer pitching. So, um, will Bellinger be good after surgery? I hope so. I don't know the extent. I mean, I know he had what it was shoulder issue, but it's hard to comment on those things because every surgery is different. It just depends on the surgery, but it doesn't sound like it's anything that's super concerning. Um, 
hey, late champion, what's going on? Thanks for hanging out tonight. Is a max velo of 91 and distance 34 good for a freshman high school? Yes. Sounds good to me. Uh, not that that is all that matters, but sounds good, yeah. How often do I play hockey now? Never. I haven't played hockey in like 20 years. <laughs> it's been a long time. I mean, I shoot the puck around a little bit with my son downstairs. We have a net down there, but... Blue Jays are signing Bauer and Riamuto. You think so? That'd be pretty impressive after signing Springer. 250, a good distance to hit a ball for a 90-pound kid. Yeah, it sounds pretty far to me. Um, I don't remember how far I was, how um, much I weighed in Little League, but... That sounds pretty good. People keep saying stop spamming, but I don't, is anyone spamming? I don't know, I haven't noticed anyone spamming. Uh, Kyle Roller, I don't believe so. Low 60s for a 14 year old? Low 60s pitching or hitting? Am I gonna miss Cam? I like Cam a lot, but I don't think I'll miss him. This is a rough year this year. It sounds like Chris Bryant might be leaving the Cubs. Pitching, low 60s as a 14 year old. Um, I wouldn't get too concerned with it. Like, I don't think that's great, but it's not terrible. But I wouldn't be too concerned as a 14 year old. We see players make like all kinds of crazy jumps. Do you think the Blue Jays sound better in Buffalo? Well, I played in Buffalo at that stadium that they played at. I was never really a big fan of it, but... Is Jack Flaherty my favorite pitcher? No, but I, I have a cool Jack Flaherty card. Um, it's a really cool Jack Flaherty card. I don't even know why I have it. I kind of just randomly bought it when I was buying cards last summer for no reason. Is 78 good for a junior? I would say 78 is about your typical high school arm, I feel like, like you're... Um, so I wouldn't say it's bad. I mean, we have some juniors that throw 90. We have some that throw 78. My favorite current player right now, um, I love watching Tatis, Soto, Acuna. Um, those are probably some of my favorite players. I love watching Mookie Betts, so I love watching Trout. I like watching Bellinger. I don't have my Little League trophies in my house or at my parents' house. All right, everybody. Can everybody give this video a like? There you go. Who is saying like right there? Cult of Ol. Yeah, everyone, if we could all give it a like. We're going to try to get the 400 on this run right here. How many stitches does the baseball have? I'm not sure. How many does it have? 212. That's a total guess. I have no idea how many stitches the baseball has. Mahomes, Trout, or LeBron? For what? Just like, great player? You talking about for cards? Ugliest teammate I've played with? Not really sure. There we go, we're almost, we're almost at 400 likes, everybody. We're almost there. 108 stitches? Wow, really, that's cool. Can I go into detail about how to put on weight and keep it on? Well, I used to lose a ton of weight during the season, but um, for me, Teddy, see Teddy, ah, this is a mistake that people make. They wrote, he wrote, please, Teddy, you wrote, Matt, please answer my question, but you didn't put a question. So that one time I saw your question, there was no question to read. Um, so putting on weight for me is very easy. It's, Beat the ever-living hell out of yourself in the weight room and eat lots of food. And that's pretty much it. And if you're not putting on weight, you're not eating enough. Or maybe you're not working hard enough in the gym. Um, but, you know, every person's going to say, oh, I eat so much. But in my experience, people that say that don't eat that much. And sometimes people think they eat so much like 
you know, when my, when mom cooks me dinner, I eat the whole plate, but that's not by RR, but that's not, that's not going to do it for you. Like you need to make eating part of your daily routine. It's like your job. So you have to make sure you're eating every, let's say three hours and you have to eat a lot. You can't just eat like a, a bird. What's so special about outfielders in the big leagues that make them able to throw upper 90s, even 100s to home plate? Um, well, it depends on each. Well, I would just say most people that throw 90 miles an hour to 100 miles an hour, whether an outfielder, infielder, pitcher, whatever, they're typically um, either one, oh, one their, their body works really well. So they, their arm action is really good and just the way their body works is, is really good. There's a, a certain way to throw the ball really hard and they do it. And then you typically add in, well, they're, most of them are probably pretty big pretty strong. Uh, I'm not saying you have to be huge, but yeah, but and by gifted, you know, he, uh, you said you're gifted. Yes. Gifted in those ways. Um, some of it's gifted. Some of it's, you know, they work at it. Uh, your first bat ever, you have a grip. Shouldn't you put pine tar? I never use pine tar with a grip. I use pine tar without a grip. How do you explain free agency? Um, elaborate on that. I'm not sure what you mean. I did not get a PS5 yet. No. Predictions for the NFC AFC games. Um, uh, I would like to see the Bucks beat the Packers. I'd like to see the Bills beat the Chiefs because I'm tired of the Chiefs winning. I would say if Mahomes is healthy, I'll say this. Going into the playoffs, I thought that the Bills were the one team that had a chance to beat the Chiefs in the AFC. And I think I said that on one of our one of my live videos. And so now they've got a chance to do it. I would still say the Chiefs will probably win being in Kansas City with Mahomes. But... He does have that little concussion thing he had, and he's got a bad toe, so I think that helps the Bills. Um, I would still, I guess I'd have to go with the Chiefs, but if the Bills win, I'm not going to be surprised. And I'm going to go with the Bucks in the NFC. Specific drills and how to load the scap correctly. Yeah, so we do a couple different drills. Um... So I, I can't really show you them right now, but actually just did a, I just did a hitting course. Uh, I just made like a two hour hitting course um, that talks about, well, we, I talk about the three drills that we do. Um, one of them, we put like a band on the bat, have a coach hold it or you put it on a fence and you just work on kind of making this move. Where you're going to take everything you're from the waist up. You're going to try to coil it, try to get your elbow behind your hands we have another drill, we have a coach or uh, stand behind us or a wall and we just kind of make that move and just hit our arm back on the wall. Um, there's, honestly, I don't think it even is so much about drills as, as it is you can just literally stand there in a mirror and just make this move a thousand times. That's as good as any drill. Um, did you say add? <laughs> Batting mentality tips. Well, there's so much that goes into the mental game of hitting, but to keep it as, uh, I have a, a playlist on YouTube on the mental game. So I would go watch those videos, but uh, to keep it very simple, I think as a hitter, you need to be, um, you need to anticipate what you're gonna, typically what you're gonna get. Um, at a younger level, it's probably just anticipate a fastball. So you're gonna anticipate getting a pitch in a certain area that you're looking for. And you're going to think aggressively that I'm going to swing at this. So we call it yes, yes, no. So I'm anticipating a pitch and I'm getting ready to hit that pitch the whole time, anticipating that's going to be there. And I'm getting ready saying, yes, my body is in swing mode. So I'm going, yes, 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 I'm going to swing. And then the ball will tell me no. So if the ball is not there, it's not that pitch, not that location, then my body says no when I stop. 
Um, to keep it very simple, I think that's a, a very important mentality. Hitting, getting your body loaded on time and being and thinking hit until the ball tells you no. And then you work off of that. Have I ever packed a lip? Uh, twice in my life, and there were two of the horrible, horrible experiences. I've told these stories on YouTube. First time I was in college, it was horrible. I wasn't even on the baseball field, it was just my friends and uh, it was terrible. And then the second time was actually after we lost to Miami in college. I was so mad, I, we got one hit, I got a hit, I let off the game with a double, didn't get another hit. I have some super chats, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna answer that in one second. So mad after the game, I go back to my hotel, my friends are uh, just hanging out in our hotel room and, uh, and, uh, and a bunch of them are like dipping. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna try it again for the second time, terrible idea. And uh, so they, I did, and uh, within like five minutes, I felt like I was gonna puke. And I went and <laughs> I, I took, we were still in our uniforms, but for some reason I hadn't gotten changed. And uh, I took off my uniform, I was in my sliding shorts, I went late in my, in my tub, put the cold water on me, and everyone was laughing at me. Then my buddy Casey Stark came in, taking pictures of me, because he thought it was funny. All right, let's see the Super Chats, everybody. Hold on one sec. What do we got here? Whoa, Roman Reigns. Thank you so much for the Super Chats. Apostle and Master, every pitch. Thank you. That is a big Super Chat. Is it possible to master every pitch? So that's a really good question. I think that, um, well, it depends what you consider master. I think even like great pitchers that, you know, whether it's the Mariano Rivera with his cutter, or it's, um, I don't know, it's just, whether it's a Clayton Kershaw breaking ball or um, any pitch. Like, even they might not consider they've mastered it. But if you want to consider that mastery, I think it's difficult. I think it's tough to master one pitch. And the more pitches you try to master it, it becomes even more difficult. There's certain pitchers, you know, like you Darvish throws like six pitches that are all like plus pitches. I don't know if you want to consider those mastered, but they're very good. I think the more pitches you try to, the harder it is. Just, you know, you just got to think about it. One, you got to put a lot of time into mastering a pitch. And so it's easier to master one, you can put a lot of time into that. Once you have two pitches, it's, you know, now you got to split your time in half. You got three pitches, you got to split it in thirds. You got four pitches, you got to split it in quarters. So, you know, it just becomes difficult. But two, there's such a small difference, right? Like if I'm gonna throw a four seam or I'm gonna get a cutter or I'm gonna throw a breaking ball or a slider, like you've got all these tiny little differences between, you know, the position of my fingers on the ball and then how the ball is gonna come off my fingers and where the pressure is gonna be and all this stuff. And so you just gotta think like, it's tough. The more pitches you have, you know, those, it's, it's difficult. Now I'm not a pitcher, I pitched when I was young, but um, I'm always amazed. You just don't see a lot. You, see, you usually see somebody, you know, the really good pitchers, they'll have, you know, let's say two plus pitches. If a guy has three plus pitches, you're like, holy gee, I'm like, I can't, like, I'm in big trouble tonight. Um, and so you don't, that you just don't see, typically see a guy that has like three plus pitches. Um, you will see some in the big leagues, but then you get you Darvish, like I said, who's got like six plus pitches. So uh, hold on, everyone. We got a super chat here. Everyone, can we get another like? We gotta get to 400 likes right now. We're almost at 400 likes. We've been on here an hour? Wow. I told Laura I was gonna watch a show with her tonight, but um, 400 likes. Oh, wow, look at that, we got 400 so quick. Thanks, everybody. 400 likes. Now we gotta go to 500. I got another super chat, everyone. Hold on one second. Aubrey Jennings, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, what are some good bats for my 15 year old son? So uh, metal or wood, I guess would be my first question. And then um, it depends. So one thing about bats is that I feel like bats are a really personal preference. And so some people like uh, more end loaded bats. Some people will like more balanced bats. So it's tough to say. Um, you know, like I know like for our 15 year olds, a lot of them, if it's a wood bat, they're, a lot of them are using Maruchis. Uh, some will use Louisville Sluggers. Uh, some are using Victus bats, all solid bats. Again, there's hundreds of models that you can look at. So it's really tough to tell. I would go online and look at those. 
Um, but then when it comes to metal bats, a lot of guys like Marucci's, you know, the cat, I don't know, there's like a cat seven, cat nine, cat eight, cat, this is a thousand cats. I know Little Slugger, they like the uh, the meta. Um, so those are some to check out. But it's tough to say which is like the best bat or what, you know, because there's just so many of them. Hold on, I'm going to sneeze real quick. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And we got one more super chat. Let's see here. Nick Gibson. I have, uh, thank you for the super chat, Nick. I've been striking out a lot. My coach is telling me to slow down my swing to make contact, which seems kind of intuitive. Any thought? Yeah, so uh, in my opinion, you can't slow down your swing. Um, I think slowing down your swing would actually make it more difficult to hit. It's almost like, you know, if you're riding a bike and you are falling over, telling someone to ride a bike slower would not give them any better balance. It probably would make your balance worse. Um, and so, yeah, I don't think striking out has anything to do with slowing down your bat. Now, what he might mean is, you know, maybe your load, maybe your load and everything might be too quick. Maybe that's what he means by slow down your swing. When I say go with my swing, I'm going all in, like I'm swinging hard, you know, not taking my body out like this, like I'm, I'm staying over the plate, but I'm swinging hard. Um, but my load, like, I want to feel like, for me, I feel like I have kind of a slow body, you know, I'm like slow body and then quick with my, my swing. So maybe slow down your load a little bit, start it slow and early. Um, but yeah, when you swing, just let it loose. Hopefully that helps you out. All right, back to the live chat, everyone. Did I always think I want to be a coach? Yeah, I knew for a long time I wanted to be a coach. Um, I really enjoy uh, baseball. I enjoy every sport, but I enjoy baseball a lot. And uh, I enjoy helping players and I enjoy building things a lot. Not like building like houses and stuff because I, I stink at that type of building stuff. But I like building, um, like as a player, I really enjoyed like the everyday um, practicing and getting better. And so as a coach, I like doing that. Like I like building a team. I like helping players get better, I like seeing players improve. And I feel like, I mean, I have a lot of experience playing and coaching now. I feel like I can help players do that, so I enjoy it. I'm trying out for a triple A junior prep college team. Any tips to get an eye on you each day? All right, well, I don't know if you're kidding or not with a triple A junior prep college team. I have no idea what that is. It might be a joke. Um, I wish I could help you with that. Who do you think's better, Dexter Fowler or Mike Trout? Well, I'll tell you this. I played with Dexter Fowler, and I like Dexter Fowler a lot. He was a good dude. And so uh, I'm going to say Mike Trout's better, though, but I like Dexter Fowler. Did you hate Kyrie as a Celtics fan? No, I didn't hate Kyrie. I think some of the things he, I mean, some of the things he did got me upset, I guess, but I, I'm not going to say I don't. I hate the guy. All right, we got a couple more super chats. We need a, we, oh, no, I'm not going to ask for likes right now because I just asked for that less than five minutes ago. Okay, let's see. What do we got for super chat? Oh, hold on one second. It won't go up. There we go. Hunter Polly. Thank you so much for the super chat, Hunter. Any relations with MLB scouts? If so, can keep, if so, can we keep in contact? So I, um, do I have any relations with them? So I know some area scouts from the Northeast, um, probably better than, I'm trying to think of any, uh, like more national scouts, not, at the, uh, not off the top of my head. Um, the scouts that I know are kind of like Northeast scouts. I don't know if that helps you at all. Ken Dog, thank you so much for the super chat. I love the videos. Thank you. What will the Yanks do? Also, mod. <laughs> um, yeah, I can make you a mod. There you go. So, uh, what will the Yanks do? 
as far as like other moves, well, they got DJ and then what they they signed Kluber, right? Um, I don't know if I mean I think the Yankees are gonna be really good again. I think that um, you know Kluber's such a question mark because of his kind of injuries the last few years and. Um, I mean, I, I said they needed started pitching, and they went out and got him. I just don't know if that's a sure thing, so I still think pitching. Uh, Laura is a moderator, but she's not on right now. Uh, Super Bowl prediction. So I really want the Bucks to win. I don't know if they're going to win. I think the Chiefs are just... When everyone's healthy, I think the Chiefs are just so good that um, it's just tough to it's tough to deal with them. But that offense is just ridiculous. Uh, our facility we um, we work out in Danvers, Massachusetts. Roman, you did another super chat and you broke the old record of super chats. But then if you put your other super chat with this, then you crushed the old record. Unbelievable. Thanks, Roman. You are the best. Um, oh, Roman, there's a question. Do I play football? Uh, I played football in high school, but uh, I don't play anymore, but I love football. Football is probably, I mean, I love, I love baseball, but I might love football more than I love baseball. I just love football. Hey, thanks, Kevin. What do you most emphasize with your eight, nine, ten teams? Um, so we actually don't have teams that young. Our youngest team is 11U, but we have some 10-year-olds on it. Uh, the thing that we, so we're trying to get 10-year-olds, uh, the young kids to start to just develop good habits. I, I mentioned this earlier in the chat, you might not have been here. Building like a good foundation. Stocky, thank you much, so much for the super chat. You have a Cam Newton picture, thank you. Um, but you don't have a question, it doesn't look like. So we try to build like a good foundation as far as like, how do you approach the game? How do you play the game? How do you run the bases? How do you, you know, study a pitcher? How do you get ready for a game? How do you watch a, um, how do you get your timing down? What are you doing in the on-deck circle? You know, how do you cheer for your teammates? How do you celebrate with your teammates? How do you run on and off the field? How do you get the ball around after an hour? How do, like all those things. Um, and then the situation things, you know, like how do you get a cutoff, man? How do you take a cutoff? Um, you know, how do you get over on a ground ball the right side? How do you, uh, there's like a thousand things. How do you communicate in a fly ball? Like all those things that as an older player, I kind of took for granted because you just know it. Younger players don't. So that's one thing I learned when I got to coaching college. I coached college in 2000 and, um, first time I was really in charge of anything was at Holy Cross in 2014. And uh, I took everything for granted. I just assumed because I knew it, everyone else knew it. And I failed to remember that like, yeah, I know it because I've played, you know, four years of high school, three years of college, eight years of pro ball. Like, that's why I knew it. And so I realized after that, you can't assume anything because a lot of players don't know, <laughs> don't know that much. Um, so. When will women have their own MLB league? Well, one of my favorite movies is a league of their own. I love that movie. It's a good question. I'm a junior. I throw 88 to 92. Got an offer from Western, West Eastern Missouri. I'm not sure I'm going to take the deal. Any advice? Well, I think you need to think about, you know, you got to think about a lot of things. I would start with everything other than the baseball, honestly. I would start about, start with like the academics and the social. If you didn't have baseball anymore, would you be happy there? Would you enjoy school there? Is that some place you feel comfortable? Um, you know, is it in the location you want? 
And then if you feel good about all that, then you start looking at the baseball stuff. Without ever seeing you play, it's tough. You know, I can see players play and then I can help them because I'm like, listen, I know you have this, this offer from this school, but you know, you can play at a much higher level than that. Or I say, you know, this is like the perfect fit for you athletically. So if you're comfortable with it academically and socially, then I think it's a really good fit for you. Um, though that would be like the type of conversation I'd go through with the player, with our players. So, um, I know it doesn't help you at all, but it's hard to give you real solid advice without knowing you and without seeing you play. <laughs> Mike Gregory, that's a great, that's a great, uh, Comment right there. I'm eight years old. I throw 97. I listen to Gasolina and B3 on repeat all day. I'm like a cheetah and I don't stretch to get loose. <laughs> That's funny. There's nothing better than Gasolina on repeat though. I mean, definitely gonna make you throw a pitch limit for 10 U. I'd use uh, USA Baseball's uh, pitch, I don't know what it's called, pitch smart or something like that. That's what I use. Jack Dawson, I am 12. <laughs> If I could play again, what would I change? I'd play better. No, I would, uh, I'm gonna make a video on this because uh, I um, was watching, I ran across a video of mine that was me swinging back in 2012, I think. And it was terrible. My swing was terrible. Uh, but I had no idea at that point. Now there were other years my swing was great. I go back and watch my swing. I'm like, man, that swing was great. Um, but I never, I didn't know enough about the swing to tell why some years it look, why some years were so good and some years it wasn't. So what I would change is going back and knowing more about my swing so I could actually look at my swing and be like, well, that's great. Stay right there. Or that's horrible. That's not going to work. Like we need to change that. Yeah. So you hit well in practice, but not in games. Great question. I have a, I have I have a YouTube video on this. It's something like, why do I, you know, hit well in practice, but not in games. It's really hard to tell without seeing you, but for me, it has something to do with your, you know, probably your bat path. Like practice is easy. Most practices are easy. One thing about baseball is that most people practice under game speed and most people practice way under game speed. And so the game and practice are nothing alike. And so they do well in practice, but then when the game starts, they don't do well. It's, it's not even because so much that, you know, you're not used to the game speed. Sometimes it is, but a lot of times is because the requirements to do well in practice are nowhere close to the requirements to do well in a game. For example, bat speed or bat quickness or bat path don't have to be good, as good in practice to be good to do well as it does or as, as it needs to be in a game. And so that's a big problem. People think like, now I'm not saying this is you, this is just a, a example, um, very generic example, is that some players are not equipped to, to do well in a game, but they do well in practice because it's easy and therefore they think they are equipped and they go in the game and they don't do well and then they can't figure out what the hell's going on. Like, I just did well in practice. Why can't I take it to the game? Must be in my head, you know? A lot of people will do that. I know it's a long question, a long, a long drawn out answer there, but the best way to get noticed is to be awesome. I would say that. Uh, it's true though. If you're awesome, you'll get noticed. Um, depends, get noticed for what? Like college ball? I would make a, a, I would make a video of some sort. What was that? I feel like I just saw someone walk past the window right here. Hey, Laura. That wasn't Laura. Apparently I have a ghost in the house. I could have sworn I just saw somebody walk right past that window. All right, everyone. Can everyone give the video a like real quick? We're going to try to get up to 500 likes. PBR perfect game showcases. Uh, I think both do a good job. And I think both there's certain really good ones and certain ones that... I don't know. I don't want to say that aren't good, but maybe aren't as good. Big a bang for your buck. Oh, we're going to 500 likes, everybody. We're almost there. We're almost, we're going. Oh, by the way, everyone, 
Um, I retested my batch speed, my, ex uh, my exit speed, and I'm putting the video up tomorrow night. So if you want to watch tomorrow night, um, check it out. It'll be uploaded at 7 p.m. Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. And uh, I don't want to spoil it, but my batch speed is starting to go up a little bit. So I don't know if you guys have watched and girls have watched my road to 400, but we're trying to get the 400 exit speed. We've got some super chats. First one. Let's see. Oh, we got stocky and we got stocky again and we got stocky again. Stocky, stocky, stocky. Uh, can you be a mod? You know what, stocky? You just gave me so many super chats. Sure. But just remember, moderators, I can revoke your privileges. Okay. Uh, also, Manny Ramirez or Garcia Parra? Uh, I'm going to go Manny Ramirez because he's my favorite hitter of all time, although Garcia Parra was at one point one of my favorite players. Fun fact, I got to play against both of them in my Major League, de major league debut. That was awesome. They were both with the Dodgers. Stocky again. Hey, can I be a mod? I want to stop spam and inappropriate questions. You are now, Stocky. Thank you. Roman, it is me outside your door. <laughs> well, at least you gave me five bucks before you scared the hell out of me. Thank you. Oh man, I'm starting to get like back pain in this chair. Whoa, these questions are going really fast. Uh, I'm gonna try to do stuff with the baseball bat bros. Yeah, I would like to uh, build, the only problem is they're all the way up in Oregon, I think someone said, and I'm way down here and oh, way over here in Massachusetts. Thanks, Roman. Appreciate all the super chats and for you hanging out tonight. How many hours did I work on baseball during my high school years? Uh, in season, I worked a decent amount. Off season, out of season, I so I played a lot of baseball in the spring and the summer. Um, in the winter and in the fall, in the fall I played football, and in the winter I played hockey. So, I was not a year-round baseball player by any means. But when I was in baseball season, I was practicing baseball. I played, I practiced every day. You know, even if I had a day off of baseball, I probably would go down and like hit at the park or, you know, play catch with my buddies or whatever. So how many hours? I have no idea. I would say during season, probably about two hour practice a day. Um, so I would say probably, yeah, about two hours a day. I did play hockey. I played hockey all four years of high school. Um, you might be able to find a video of me on YouTube if you type in Matt Antonelli hockey check or something like that. My video might pop up. I did, I put a high school video of me sending a kid to the hospital, <laughs> sent the kid to the hospital. Um, you might be able to find that. Check it out. We have a super chat, everybody. Super chat, Ken dog. Thanks, Ken. Who is the biggest threat in the AL and NLY? The biggest threat? Mm, let me think about this. <sighs> well, I think the White Sox are gonna be very good. I like the White Sox last year and they just keep adding. So I like the White Sox to be a threat in the AL. Um, who else? That would be my get that would be my pick in the AL. Um, in the NL, a threat. Well, I think the Dodgers are still the most talented team. I think the Padres have clearly close the gap. I like the Braves. I think the Braves pitching staff, I, I like the moves they've made. And I think they have some really good young pitchers and they get um, Soroka back. I like the Braves. Uh, who else off the top of my head would be a threat in the NL? I mean, the Mets are interesting. I think they are, I think they still gotta sure up a little bit their defense. But I like him. Good question, though. Will E, thank you for the super chat. Any memorable empires during your career? So one thing I didn't, I'm bad at is knowing umpires' names. Um, the most memorable, the most memorable thing that's ever happened to me from an umpire was uh, I've told this story before. Playing in the major leagues, and uh, for for my whole life. 
when I'm at second base and a guy steals, I catch the ball and I just swipe tag. And I swipe tag and a lot of times I hit him, but a lot of times I don't hit him, but it's so close, you just swipe it down, put the glove up, umpire says, he's out, and then you throw a ball on the infield. I did that my whole life, never been yelled at or whatever. And uh, in the major leagues, guy steals. I catch the ball, I swipe tag, I, br I bring it up, umpire goes, he's out. This is before instant replay, just remember about this. There was no instant replay at this point yet. Umpire goes, he's out, I throw the ball around. And I didn't touch him. I just, I caught it. I just, you know, did a swipe tag, but I didn't hit him. I came close, but I didn't hit him. Um, I threw the ball around. And as I'm running back to my position, the umpire comes over to me and he goes, he said, um, next time F and tag him. And I was like, whoa. I'm like, these freaking umpires are unbelievable. How did he, like, how did he know I didn't tag him? No one has ever said that to me in my life. And I was scared. I don't know if I said it. I was scared. S H I T. Let's. I was like, this freaking umpire. Not only did you see that, and he just cussed me out and he yelled at me. And uh, I think it was the first time I ever tried to tag somebody in the major leagues. But that was a real deal. Real deal. Oh my God! These moderators. Holy crap! Oh man! Oh, hope the Yankees. Yeah, a lot, well, too many messages, so you got, you got the moderators out after you. All right. Hey, thanks, Mike. My biggest piece of advice is uh, have fun, enjoy the game, because it's supposed to be fun, and then work really hard at it. Figure out, learn as much as you can about the game, about, you know, whether you're a hitter or a pitcher, about your swing, and... And then uh, try to self-evaluate, figure out what you do well, what you don't do well, and then come up with a game plan on how you're going to improve those things that you don't do well and, uh, and continue to improve the things you do well. That would be my advice. Any recruiting advice for a junior throwing low 90s? Well, if you're a junior throwing low 90s, I don't think you need a whole lot of advice. At least you shouldn't. I would think lots of schools should be on you. There's not a whole lot of juniors that throw in the low 90s, so... I would make a video, literally. What's your name? Okay. Whoever just said that. If you're a junior throwing in the low 90s, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get a video of you throwing in the low 90s with a radar gun. And then I want you to send it to me. And I bet you I can get you recruited in five minutes. Okay? That's what I want you to do. You're going to email matt at antonellibaseball.com with a video of you throwing nine, low 90s. I'm assuming you're not going to throw it off the bull and throw it, you know, 50 feet that way. But if you are around the zone throwing low 90s as a junior, I can get you recruited in five minutes. All right. All right, everybody, so, uh, oh, can everyone give this video a like? We need to get the 500 likes. We gotta get there right now. Let's see, we need 21. Can we get 21 likes? Oh, there we go, we got four likes right there. All right, here we go. Oh, we were 499, here we go, and we need one more. I do know Pat McAfee, I do. Thanks, Brian. Hey, 506, yes, 506, everybody. All right, we're all, we're making our way to 600. We're gonna break the record tonight, possibly. I, I tell you what, our, our videos have been, um, you know, it's been really weird over the last year. We were at a point about a year ago in like February and March where every day we were getting like three, four, five, 600 new subscribers a day. And then COVID hit. And then all of a sudden, like the subscribers started going down where I was getting like, 10 a day, 15 a day, five a day, 10, it was like so strange. But then lately, the last month, I've been getting like 100 a day, 150 a day, it's starting to go back up again. So it'd be interesting. I mean, we might soon be getting back to like three, four, five, six hundred new subscribers a day. And uh, our 500 likes in this soon could be like a thousand likes. That's gonna be cool.
Patreon. So we do have a Patreon. Uh, I haven't, I used to use it more, honestly, all Patreon really is at this point is like, um, people just will, will send it in or I don't even know what to call it. Um, become a patron by just to support the channel. We'll give like a shout, I'll give like a shout out to everyone. You'll see at the end of my videos that always talk, I always put like all our patrons. But at some point I'd like to do some, expand that and offer, you know, special content to the patrons, stuff like that. I have not heard Coco Crispy rap song. All right, everybody, I'm gonna say this, so I'm gonna stay on for about another five minutes and then I'm gonna go. I don't know what time it is right now. Let's see, I came on at 9.15, 10.15. It's probably like 10.45-ish maybe. Um, I did tell Laura I was gonna watch a show with her tonight. She's probably watching Grey's over there, which I don't want. Uh, Blast Sensor, I like, I, I uh, like Blast Sensor. I actually have a call tomorrow with Blast. I'm talking to them about some stuff, so. What's for dinner? Um, we had steak tips tonight for dinner. Tips on buying a new glove? Well, I'm a huge Rawlings fan. I always use Rawlings, uh, Heart of the Hide. With everything, I don't know, maybe it's just because I played a lot. Like, I could put on a glove and tell within two seconds if I'm going to like this glove or not. So, I just put on tons of gloves or grab a bunch of bats and feel them and I can tell if I like them or not. I just think there's so many different, you know, there's so many different gloves and um, there's so much personal preference that I have, I have to, you know, feel the glove. MILB reorganization. Yeah, I think there were so many teams before. I mean, it stinks because it limits the amount of players that have opportunities, but I also think there was a lot, there was probably too many teams in my opinion. Do I think Luis Castillo will go to the Yankees? Is that what you said? I mean, that'd be nasty because I think he's nasty. I have not heard Coco Chris rap. Nope. Advice on Bat Path? Um, Andrew, I would... Um, when we get off of here, just type in, go to our page or type in like Bat Path, Man, it's only Bat Path or something. I talk a ton about Bat Path. I think the most important things for a hitter are bat speed, which is just how fast the bat moves through the zone. Bat quickness, which is essentially like how quickly can you get your bat up to full speed and get into the zone. And then and bat path, you know, being on the right path is going to allow you more consistency more consistency and better timing and all that. So all three are important, but bat path is huge. And the tons of players struggle because their bat path is just all out of whack. So I would, uh, I'd go watch those videos. I'm hungry too. I just had a ton of ice cream. I might go eat more though. J, JQ Frutos, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. There's no question there, but it looks like you sent the super chat. All right, everybody, we're gonna do, oh, let's do this. First, if everyone could give one more like, we're gonna make one more push to 550. I think we can do it, get the 550 likes. I think we can. Should the Pats re-sign Cam? Nah, I, I probably would let Cam walk. Um, I like the LeMahieu deal. I know it was a long deal. Oh, we need nine more likes for 550, eight more. I know it was a long deal, but I think at $15 million per year to get an MVP candidate, I think you got to say in the year 2021, that that's a pretty good deal. Uh, I always like to sign autographs. Uh, we don't play in Western Massachusetts really very much. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Well, what would you consider Northboro? Central Mass? Uh, playing an elite travel team can help with recruiting, but it doesn't. Ha you don't have to play an elite team to get recruited. The font on my thumbnails, uh, I don't remember. I'm not sure. I have. I just have it on my computer, and uh, every time I type, it's in that font. I don't remember what it's called though. Do I need a perfect bat angle at the start of the swing? Well, your bat, your bat is going to. Do I need a perfect bat angle at the start of the swing? I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that, but 
you know, the way you launch your bat and the way you start your swing is going to dictate kind of what happens through the zone. So I think it's important. But again, it, 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 we could talk about that a long time. I go watch our videos. Oh, you're a super chat. What do you miss about San Diego? I'm a Padres fan. What do I miss about San Diego? I miss the warm weather. I miss uh, the beaches. I miss... Uh, those are the main things. Um, I really enjoyed playing there. I mean, I never played for another major league team. I played for other organizations, but never in the big leagues, all in AAA. So thanks, Rex. Um, but everything about San Diego for me, like playing at Petco and being downtown San Diego, and um, like I said, the weather, it's got to be one of the nicest places to play. Hey, we got over 500 likes. All right, everybody. Well, it's been a very fun night. I appreciate everyone hanging out. Your sister is Drew Brees. <laughs> um, I appreciate all the questions. I appreciate all the super chats and everyone hanging out, all the likes. Um, we will do this again. I don't know which night. Check out tomorrow night if you want to see. Uh, I'm going to be swinging the bat. Try, I'm trying to get to 90 mile an hour exit speed. Not because I'm trying to make a comeback, just because I'm interested to try. But um, if you want to check that out tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. It's a road to the show, or road to 400, sorry. So I've got a bunch of videos if you want to go back and check them out. But uh, we're going to try to hit 90 miles an hour exit speed tomorrow night. We'll see if we can do it. Anyways, thanks everybody again. And um, we will talk to you next time. I'll answer your questions at some point. Probably, what's today? Wednesday? Probably next week, but maybe this weekend. We'll see.